we've been talking about water gems for quite a while now, but there is this important topic that we have not covered yet. And that is nothing but how to size a water pump in water gems software. This is exactly what we are going to cover in today's tutorial. So if you're new here, my name is Engineer Lodrick and this is Hydroinformatics Academy. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is a simple network that we want to design by using our water gem software. As you can see, here is our source and this one here is uh, our destination, which is uh, our water storage tank. So we are pumping water from this source all the way to uh, this uh, ground storage tank. A groundwater storage tank and uh, not just that within this source we have our pump which is submerged okay so this is a pump which is submerged and not just that this pump is supposed to take water from this source all the way to this uh, storage tank so the elevation at this uh, source which is um where our pump is is submerged is 100 meters and also the elevation at our storage tank is 150 meters and of course we have some other elevation values at these uh, junctions here. Again, uh, between uh, junctions, we have the pipes, which are for, uh, for example, uh, this pipe here is uh, has a length of 250, and uh, this one here has a length of uh, 200, uh, 300, and also this one, uh, 500, and also this one here. So we want to draw this network in WaterGem software, and then from there we can start designing our network. Okay, so let me open my uh, software, which for now I am using WaterGems Connect Edition. And um, the first thing that I need to do is to open the new project. So let me select a new project. Then from here, let me select yes. Of course, I need to track changes for uh, my work. So let me uh, click, uh, click yes. Then from there, uh, what, uh, what you need to do is to introduce some uh, settings. So from here, let me select options. And let me select the base uh, base computation. So let me uh, click properties. And then if you have anything you want to change in here, you can change it from here. But for now, the most important setting here, of course, here the engine compatibility, I'm using the Water Gems 2.0. And um, again, I don't think if there is anything important that I can change. Of course, the time analysis type is a steady state and not EPS. And also, I have to make sure that my calculation type uh, is based on only in hydraulics. Of course, if you want if you want to change anything, you can change it from here. But for now, let me maintain hydraulics only. Then let me close this and even this one. As I said, we have uh, our source, which is uh, this lake or pond. So in water gems, we can model this uh, uh, this kind of source by using a reservoir. So let me go back here and select and go straight to home and select layout then from layout as you can see now we have junction that is active but i need to introduce a reservoir okay i need to introduce uh, this reservoir here and of course i need so to achieve that i need to right click and select uh, the reservoir then this is my reservoir then from there the next parameter here is the pump okay so the pump that is, is within this uh, lake or a pond so I need to, to right click again and select and select and select uh, the pump. Okay, so this is my pump. And again, uh, I need to introduce here the junction. Okay, so let me right click and select the junction. So this is our first junction. And again, so how many junctions do we have? So the first, uh, so this is the first, second and third. So let me select, so this is the first and again, this one is the second, and this one here is the third junction. Then from this third junction, we have the uh, storage tank. So I need to introduce a storage tank. But for now, as you can see, the active element here is the junction. We don't want that. So let me right click and select the uh, tank. So from here, this is my tank. Okay, let me put it that way. So because our network is over, uh, what uh, what you can do is to click escape or you, or you can just simply right click and select done Then from there. I don't think if I have anything again Okay, so this is our network. So so far we have managed to take our network from our sketch all the way to And draw it in our software, which is water gems So what we need to do next is to make sure that we introduce the uh, the properties of each junctions and each um, pipes and even the reservoir and our pump that is what we are going to do next. Let's proceed. Okay, so from here, uh, what we need to do is to introduce the parameters. So let me start with the junctions, okay? Let me start with the junctions. So one by one, 
of course we have two options here you can just select one by one and enter the elevation values but for me i prefer to use the flex tables okay so let me use the, the flex table for this for this case so let me go to home and select flex table so from here let me select uh, junctions because i'm dealing with elevations so if i take this so the first value here is 130 130 or 130 meters so let me go back here and select so the first junction here the uh, the value here is 130 and also the second one the value the second one the value the value here is one for 145 so 145 and the third junction the value here is nothing but 120 meters so let me double click here and select 120 120 meters okay so so far we have managed to in to insert all of the elevation values so if i double click one of the junctions you can see this is our elevation but what we need to do next is to see if we we have something to uh to uh, change in our reservoir so let me double click this okay so this is our reservoir and as i said earlier this is what is going to present our source and we need to make sure that we insert the value of our source within this uh, reservoir in water gems from our sketch the value of of our source of course it has the elevation of 100 meters so let me go back here let me minimize this and the elevation of our source is 100 meters and also i don't think if i have anything more to change let me close this and also now we have to deal with our pipes again you, you can uh, select one by one and enter the length value but i think the best option the best option when it comes to water gems is to use the uh, flex table of course that is the simplest way to uh, deal with uh, these uh, parameters so let me go and select pipes okay so let me select a uh, flex table then select pipes then from here one thing here that you can notice is that our software is asking us if we want to enter the values of our length manually of course that's what uh, that's what we want to do so from here i want to select of course if i want to select a uh, has defined the length so i want to accept it for each pipe okay so from here pipe number one pipe number one i need to enter the value for each of our pipes so let me start with pipe number five so the pipe number so pipe number five is it was this one which is for 470 and also this one here is 500 so let me minimize this 450 pipe number five which is uh if i'm not mistaken is uh this one let me take it so it is this one so here is 450 470 sorry and also this one here is 500 and not just that so the next is a 300 then followed by uh, this one here which is uh, 250 so 300 250 300 then 250 but we have uh, this one here we have this uh, which is pipe number p1 so let me close this so we have to enter the value for this p number one here is the point now we have a pipe p2 p3 p4 and p5 but pipe p2 which is uh, this one so this is pipe p2 and if i take you back here you can see this is a pipe p2 which is uh, this one here okay so this is pipe p2 but if i take you back here again you can see we also have another pipe which is pipe p1 but the question here is in our network where is pipe p1 okay so the simplest answer is that pipe p1 does not exist in our network and it is there with one reason to link um, a reservoir in water gems with a pump okay so in other words we need to model our network in such a way that pipe p1 which does not exist in our network it has zero influence in our network and to achieve that we need to insert the values which will ensure that this pipe p1 has zero head losses and hence it has zero influence in our network and how to do that let me show you how we do it so because pipe p1 does not exist in our network we need to make sure that it has a zero head losses 
that is what I said. Okay, so to achieve that, we need to change the value of pipe P1, which is this one. So let me start with uh, the length. Remember, the goal here is to make sure that the pipe P1 has zero influence in our network when it comes to head losses. So we need to change the length and also the diameter. So let, so let me start with the, with the diameter. Let me insert the huge value for, for diameter, okay? So for that, let me insert here, uh, let's say like a thousand, not just a thousand, let me insert like 10,000, the huge value. And not just that, I need to change the length of pipe P1. And not just to change it, I need to insert the value of the length in such a way that the head losses for pipe P1 will be negligated or will, will be as minimal as possible and hence negligated in our model. So to achieve that, let me go back here and select and select the length. Okay, so the length here, remember here the value here is, is true. So the length here, I'll just insert 0 0.01. You can even insert like 0 0.001. So as I said, we insert this value with one goal to make sure that the pipe P1, it has zero influence or it has almost negligible values of head losses. And that is the reason why we inserted here the diameter as huge as possible value, which is 10,000. And also the length, we inserted the length as a 0 0.001, okay? So with that, I'm sure that the head losses for this pipe P1 will be as, as small as possible, negligible. So let me close this. And uh, what to do next, uh, because the pipe P1 now, we, we, we are done with pipe P1 and also pipe P2, the value of length is there. So what we need to do next is to make sure that we change the value for tank or tank T1. So let me double click this and let me take you back here. Remember, as I said earlier, we are taking water from uh, this source to this uh, water storage tank. But we need to make sure that we insert the value for this uh, water storage tank in our software, which was, uh, which is uh, this one. So we need to change the parameter for pipe for a storage tank, which is this one, and insert the value that we have here in our sketch. So let me double click this. So the first value here, the first value here is uh, elevation. So what was the elevation for our for our storage tank? It was simple. It is simple, which is 170. So the elevation here for our storage tank is 170. 170. And also we need to change the operation range or the uh, values for operation range. So from that, what we need to do is to start with the uh, base elevation. So the elevation at the base. Remember, we have two options here. Before we even move further, we have two options for uh, this value. So we can insert uh, these values here by using the elevation, or we can insert these values here by using levels. So because we have been dealing with the elevation, so I think uh, for this tutorial, let us switch a little bit and let's uh, insert these values by using the levels. So from here, I need to select, uh, I need to select the levels, levels, and also, I need to select the elevation at the base, which was 170, and not just that. So the first, so the next value here is, so the next value here is the minimum water level. So if I take you back, so the minimum water level here is at uh, this one. So if if you can see, this is the pipe that is taking water from our storage tank to the community. So the minimum water level is this one, which is a 0 0.35, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 0 0.3 meters. So I need to make sure that I insert the value of 0 0.3, the value of um, minimum water level as 0 0.3. Okay, remember this is the distance. Remember this is the distance from from this point here, from the from the ground all the way to this point where the where our pipe is taking water to the community. And the, not just that, the next value here is the initial water level. So the initial water level. Let me take you back here to our sketch. The initial water level is this point here. So from the ground all the way to this inlet pipe. So this pipe that, uh, that is taking water from the from the pump all the way to our storage to our storage tank. So the initial is so the, the initial water level is from this point here to this point, which for our case is uh, three meters. So I'm going to insert three meters for initial water level. Three meters. And not just that, the maximum value, the maximum value is from 
at this point, from this point all the way to uh, this point here. So let's assume the maximum uh, value here is uh, 3.5. 3.5. So this one here is 3.5. So the next point, the next point is to make sure that we modify the properties of our uh, pump by making sure that we insert the value of pump curve and all those stuff. So let me click this. Let me click this. And we start with our pump. So our pump is located is located right within this uh, source. So the elevation of our pump is three. Um, sorry, is 100 meters. So if I double click this, the elevation of our pump is uh, 100 meter. Of course, which is the same elevation as our source. And again, we also need to insert the curves. Okay, we we also need to insert the curves. So to insert the, uh, the curve, uh, what we need to do is to make sure that we, we change the pump definitions. So from here, I need to uh, right click. So if I select this, you can see we have a, a little drop down menu here. It says edit pump definition. So if I click this, if I click this, you can see we have this uh, blank window here. So what I need to do is to click new from here. Let me click new. So this is a new pump definition you can even give it a name so let me give it a name like a pump okay let's say let's let's say pump number one okay then we have to so the next step is to make sure that we change the pump definition type remember we have uh, these several pump definition types that we can use for in our model but what we want to use or what we want to select just to make sure just to make uh, things simple is to go with uh, this uh, design point okay so remember we you even have these other options but for our case we we are going to use just a, a design point with which is just a single point in our pump curve so let me select this again from here you can see the the shut off value here is not needed even the maximum operating point is not needed but the only value that is needed is the a design point, which is uh, this one. So we need to make sure that we insert the value for our flow, for the flow, and also the value for our uh, head. So if I take you back here, you can see our pump is here, but we want to pump six liters per second from our source all the way to our storage tank. The value here is six. Remember, this is six liters per second, but the other a parameter here is head okay so far we have seen that to get the complete pump curve we need two values the first one is the flow and the other one is nothing but the pump head but so far the only value that we have is the flow which is six liters per second but the question here is how can we get the pump head okay how can we get the appropriate pump head or the required pump head for our pump we have several approaches to go around that but for this art tutorial what we are going to use is the trial and error approach and we are going to run several iterations with the guest pump head and to make sure that at the end of the day we, we are taking the the value of pump head which will which will make our pump to deliver six liters per second to our storage tank remember six liters per second this is the flow that is required from our pump so the best value will be the one in which our pump is going to deliver six liters per second let me show you how we do it okay so so let me select so let me double click my my pump and also select uh the pump definition where the pump definition pump uh, pump definition and let me go back here and let me select edit and again uh, this was our pump cup so the flow value here is six liters per second and for the head i'm going to take the first guest value or the first iteration i'm going to use the value of 70. so the question here is why 70? well let me take you back here remember our source elevation here is 100 and the, the storage tank here value is 170 but the point here is for any pump or any centrifuge pump we have two a major pipe um, a major pump head so the first one here is a, a static and the other one here is the dynamic okay so for for static pumping head we take this value minus this one so and this is the value that it is going to be the first guess value so if i take 100 minus 170 automatically the answer here is 
uh, 70. So this is the uh, static head which is 70 and that is going to be my first guess value of course for the first iteration. So if I minimize this and we have our 70 here already and the flow here is 6 uh, six liters per second. As soon as I filled all the uh, required values we have our pump curve here. Okay so this is our pump curve where we have e so and this one here is our head and also this one here is our uh, flow. So if I close this uh, you can see that if I go down here for the pump data for the pump data you can see we have the uh, shut off head again these uh, values here were derived from our pump curve here so the power the flow uh, design so the flow uh, which is the flow at the design point is six liters and also the uh, the head with is 70 remember this was just at the first value which is the static head which is a uh, 70. so if i close this and uh, from here, I don't think if I, there is anything, so I need to run my model. Of course, I need to optimize my model to make sure that I have the best possible value for our, our pipes. So from here, I don't think if there is anything more I need to enter. So let me click. So before we even run our model, let me uh, validate my model if there is anything. Of course, we don't have any problem. Let me uh, compute now my model and see what I have. Okay, so trials, we have three, uh, three trials and again we have uh, the amount supplied which is 5 liters per second. Remember, what we want is to supply 6 liters per second and not 5 liters per second. Okay, so let me close that. But uh, what I need to do is to display the value for flow and velocities and everything. So if I go back here and select pipes. So for pipes, I need to introduce, but before that, let me... Uh, maximize this the only value here we have is label but let me introduce the other value or the other annotation value and uh, with that i need to select the results and i need to select the flow okay if i click apply you can see we have the 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 number here which is five but i want to take it down a little bit in y axis i need to take it down with negative two okay so so what does this mean is that we are taking so our pump for now is supplying a five liters per second to our storage tank but as i said earlier we want our pump to deliver not five liters of four liters of seven liters but six liters per second to our storage tank and uh before that let me cross check something the elevation for pump of course is this one 100 which is the same as our reservoir okay and um, i need to increase the precision for our pipes so precision for uh, flow precision for flow of course the other option you can even go to tools and but for me i for simplicity i'll just click this and click the flow and i need to change the precision for this r5 here for this value so let me click here and increase the display precision to two and of course the units if you want to change you can change but uh, I want to maintain a liters per second. Let me click OK. Uh, you can see for now our pump is delivering four, uh, 5.43 okay, liters per second to our, to our storage tank. But uh, again, let me check the velocity. Let me select annotation and select velocity. Results, then select velocity. Uh, and again, let me click apply. But uh, that is not where I want it to be. Let me take it up in y direction. Sorry, in y direction. Let me take it to um, let me take it to a two positive two and eight two. Then let me apply. But I also need to turn off uh, this label because I can see now. For now, it is not that visible. Let me turn off this label. You can see now. Our pump is delivering 5.43 liters per second to our storage tank, but the velocity is not the value that we want because the value of the velocity value is supposed to range from 0.5 all the way to like uh, two, if not three meters per second. But for now, what we're having is quite small uh, value. Let me see how I can uh, uh, change it. Uh, for that, let me go back to flex table. And select pipes then i need to change 
the value let me give it one one ten and also this one 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 ten and also this one 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 ten okay remember i'm i'm finding a way of increasing uh, this value here uh, which is 0 0.3 for now for velocity let me uh, run again you can see for now what we are having is uh, 0 0.51 which is you know the best value for a uh, velocity but we also have another problem which is uh, for now our pump is, de is delivering only 4.8 this is not what we want so let me go back here again to our pump curve remember uh, the, for the first iteration, the value that we used was a uh, 70. Was at uh, this 70. So this minus one. So this minus this, which was a static value, which was 70. That is what we used. But we need to increase a, a little bit to see what we have. So let me go back here to pump definitions and let me go back to our pump. So select edit pump definitions. Let me increase it a little bit to like 80. So from 70 to 80. Remember, this is the second iteration. Let me let me select uh, 80 and let me close. As you can see, as far as I, I changed, you can see even the value in this area here. We have 80 as well, and also we have a uh, six uh, liters per second. So let me close this and let me run again and see what we have. Let me validate this and let me run and see what we have. Okay. So so far I can say. Uh, it is not a bad value because if if you can see we have 5.99 which is technically equal to 6 okay so the value here of our velocity is uh, 0 0.6 and also we have the, um, the the required flow that is required for our, our storage tank uh, which is 6 almost 6 but i don't think if i can change uh, more let me inc let me uh, select again annotation and uh, let me add another parameter that is uh, head losses. Let me see if I have head losses. Uh, head, head losses gradient. And again, let me apply. Okay, let me apply. But for now, it is not visible. Let me uh, apply negative two in x direction. Let me offset it with negative two in x direction. And again, let me uh, turn off this not not velocity but flow. You can see now uh, the units is not this is not the unit that I, I, I want what I want is to display my um, head loss gradient in um, meters per kilometer so let me double click this and let me go back here to head loss gradient head loss gradient of course it is this one of course you can even uh, change your units and even the display uh, precision from here or you can even go to tools but for simplicity, I'm going to stick with this one. I want to change my uh, unit to meters per kilometer. And again, a uh, display precision uh, 3 is too much. Let me select 2. Okay. And okay. So for now, we have uh, like 4.64. Uh, and 4.64 uh, meters per kilometers. Of course, this is uh, not that good. But... It is not bad as well okay of course you can go and uh, play with it and make sure that at least you have 10 uh, meters per kilometers but for now i think that value is not as bad but let me see if i can uh, reduce a little bit let me see if i can change it let me reduce the pipe uh, size um let me take it to 90 and also this one to 90 and also this one to 90 and uh, this one as well to 90 and let me close uh -huh. so let me run again and see what we have at least for now we have the uh, best of so let me check again the flow if we have anything if anything is changed uh, i don't think if this is the best option let me take let me take back my values to a four inch pipe 1110 so let me take it back to 1110 i don't think if there is anything that i can change from here okay so that is what uh, we have if i check if i check the uh, velocities this is what we have and if i check the flow of course the flow this is exactly what we want our pump to deliver in our pump in our uh, storage tank which is almost uh, six liters per second and um so the last question is uh, which is the 
uh, pump head. Of course, we have six liters per second, which we have it from the beginning. But also the question here is, what is the value of total pumping head for our pump? So if I go back here, so if I select reports, and if I select pump, you can see we have here the, so under reports, we have the pump. You can see uh, this is our value. Let me take uh, this one here. Yeah, you can see this is our value. So this is our pump, uh, which was uh, PMP1. And also the elevation of, so the, our pump is, is located at 100 meter, of course, as elevation. And of course, this is the pump uh, definition, which is the curve that we, we insert uh, earlier. And also the initial status for our pump in our model is on. And again, the hydraulic grade, of course, this one here is at the sanction point, which is uh, 100 meters. And of course, we also have this one. And lastly, of course, this one here is at the discharge point, which is uh, this uh, storage tank, which is uh, 180. And lastly, we have the, the flow. So the flow, so our pump has, uh, has a flow of uh, 5.99, which is roughly equal to six uh, liters per second. And lastly, the pump head for our pump is 80, of course, 80.06. So in nutshell, the properties of the pump that is required for this um, uh, network is first, the flow is six uh, liters per second. And lastly, the pump head or the total pumping head or the total dynamic head is 80.06. Okay, so that is the pump that is required for our network. So that is all that I had for you today. But if you want to learn more about water gems, I have some other very impressive uh, tutorials in my channel. Just visit my channel. And also I'll make sure that I include the link to some of them in the description below. And not just that, if you get something out of this video, don't forget to hit that like button and also share it with your friends. And if you're new here, make sure that you subscribe and turn on that bell notification to be notified when I upload another tutorial like this one. With that being said, thank you and I'll see you in the next tutorial.